Hello, YouTube yogis, and thanks for being with me today. I'm Megan, and my friend Liz is here visiting Ireland, and we've done quite a bit of yoga together over the years, and Liz has a beautiful handstand, which oftentimes can lead to some tight shoulders, specifically to uh, external rotation. But even if you don't do handstand in yoga, the practice we're doing today is a somatic yoga practice and goes into yoga therapy. We're gonna do some assessment and three simple movements that will help to keep your shoulders, uh, let's say lubricated and your neck comfortable. So you'll wanna start in a comfortable seated position. We're here on the floor, but if there's any discomfort on the floor, please find a chair. So the first thing we'll do is just find what I call the clock face numbers on the shoulders. You'll breathe in, find your breath in, and then lift your shoulders as high as you can. Just squeeze them up towards your ears and then breathe out and slowly let them go a little at a time, like 10% at a time, and do just that upper movement first and notice what that feels like. Can you feel your collarbones and your shoulder blades? Sensing the bony landmarks. If you don't wanna do it to your breath, you don't have to. Just try to time the up and the down about the same. Let's do one more up. And release. The next one we do is back. So that was the 12 o'clock. So the next one is the three o'clock. Think of squeezing your shoulder blades on your back. You can also think of spreading your collarbones. And release. So I'm watching Liz and you can watch yourself. One of the things I check as she's doing this is that we're not using our elbows to pull back. So we wanna keep the arms relaxed and think of moving from the collarbones spreading or smiling and the shoulder blades squeezing. Feels different, right? You can, and if you can't tell, go ahead and use your elbows on one round. Yeah? Now let the arms stay relaxed and move from your shoulder girdle. That beautiful girdle. Nice, we'll do one more back and release. The next movement is down. Think of it as your six o'clock. So I like to think of armpits and we're trying to touch our armpits to our waist. So again, it's really easy to use your elbows and your arm bones, but leave your arms relaxed and on an inhale, squeeze your armpits towards your waist. So this one may not show up as much as can on camera, but what you might sense is that you're tightening under the armpit and you're stretching the top of the shoulder and even the sides of the neck. This is a nice one to get into the neck. We're trying to be mindful to keep the, the skull right over the neck and the ears over the shoulders and the shoulders over the hips. So let's see how that feels. And check on the release that it's truly released. Sometimes what happens is we press down and then we lift back up. Can you just let them float back up? And then the last position we're gonna do is forward. So I call that your nine o'clock. So think of the head of your arm bones here kissing in front of you or your Tightening around your collarbones, you'll feel your pectoral muscles tighten and your shoulder blades spread. So once again, watch you're not using your arms. You're moving from your shoulders. And shoulders, it goes from the middle of your sternal notch here all the way out to the edge of the arm, what we think of this through the shoulder joint, and then on the backside from your spine to the edge of the arm. Yeah, so we're squeezing forward. Notice what that feels like. You can do it from either tightening here or spreading the backside. Does that feel different if you move by contracting the front versus lengthening or spreading the back? Okay, so that was fairly simple, right? Roll them out a little bit. Just roll the shoulders out. As you do that, just let your neck, think of your neck being hydrated. Just kind of floating, let it move wherever it wants as you roll your shoulders. So for most of us, it's fairly easy to do this movement with both shoulders at the same time. And that's typically what we'll do in a yoga class. But here's where the trick comes in. We're gonna do that same movement, only we're gonna do one shoulder at a time because what happens when we have what we call sensory motor amnesia, where one shoulder is stuck in a particular position, the muscles aren't working, then it may not show if we're doing this uh, symmetrically, so we do one at a time. So do you know if you have one shoulder that's stickier than the other? Okay, so she's not sure. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the left shoulder. So we're gonna do those same positions. You're gonna go up and release on your breath out. So if you're doing it to your breath, go back. So there's your three o'clock and release and down and release and then forward. We've got a live studio audience today doing it with us. 
So you're going around 12, 3, 6, and 9. Take your time. Another thing I watch for is that when we're doing this movement, the torso's not rotating. So you want to really sense that it's your shoulder. Yeah. Can you feel the difference in just doing one shoulder now? More, yeah, more focus. So you want to find those four points. The 12, the 3, nice. The 6, and the 9. And then once you've found them and you've lo landed and located in those muscles, then go ahead and roll it around nice and slow. Like you want to touch all the numbers in the clock now. Nice. I'm getting some cracking. Don't know about Liz. And you can also go the other direction. So you might go up and forward and down and back. And I can see she's doing a really good job of not using her arm. But if you're using your arm, go ahead and do that so you get that idea. So here's a swim, like this is a swim arm, right? We don't want to swim with our arm, we want to rotate from the shoulder. Shoulders are really interesting because they're built for mobility, not stability. There you go. And then relax and just take a moment, flip your palms up and feel your left and right shoulder. This is that magic moment. Can you sense the difference? And just feeling that. So we give the nervous system, it's like giving the nervous system a s chance to bathe in that transformation and recognize that this is what it feels like when we have true freedom and comfort in our shoulder. And let's do the other side. You can take your palms down. So recognize your right shoulder. And we come up first. You can do that on your breath in and then slowly release all the way to 100%. Go back. There's your three o'clock. And release and downward, six o'clock. Tighten that armpit, release, and forward, and release. And just take your time. So again, if you're using your elbow, go ahead and use it to feel the, you wanna find the mobility, but then can you, can you duplicate that mobility moving from the shoulder? And it might not be the same end range of motion, it might be more limited, but finding that. And notice if you find more mobility by squeezing from the front versus spreading from the back, like how is it that you can find your mobility? Is it by through compression or contraction of muscles or lengthening muscles? Yeah. And finding those four points on the clock first. So, and you may notice, you may notice, you may notice that one shoulder feels stickier than the other. Is there one that's easier to move or about the same? I think about the same. Okay. And then once you find those four points, go ahead and roll it out. Keep the neck relaxed. All the way around like you're touching all the numbers on the clock face. Sorry for you digital people. Goes all the way around the clock. And Nice and easy. Notice where you try to miss or where it feels sticky. Those are the points to, to go even slower. And you can switch the direction. So smooth out those sticky points. Or when the elbow tries to come in. <laughs> or when the head starts to turn and the torso rotates. Got a few of those here. Yeah. All right. And then relax. So we'll do another one while we're seated. We'll do one more here. And this is more to loosen less of an assessment. You might feel a difference though. We're gonna take what we call eagle arms or garudasana arms in yoga. You're gonna take your left arm underneath the right. And if it's more comfortable to just take your hands to your shoulders, do that. That's the first option. Second one is backs the hands together. Third option, only if it's comfortable, is the palms or the fingers come to the palms. So whatever you got there, then lift your elbows slightly away from the body. So you might be here or here or here. And now what we're gonna do is relax the shoulders downward as best you can and let the ear fall to the left shoulder as the hands fall towards the right. And then come back to the center. I like to inhale and move, exhale back to the center, but you don't have to do it to your breath. Nice. And I'm gonna watch her for a moment. So again, sometimes what I see is that the shoulders, the upper body torso is rotating. So you wanna keep that from happening. She's doing a nice job staying centered. The other thing that'll happen is what we're trying to accomplish here is to just 
Keep going, Liz, nice job. Keep just dropping the ear to the shoulder versus rotating the neck, right? So it's a drop, a lateral bend, yeah. And the studio audience is doing a great job too. Nice. Let's take a few more. Can you sense when the muscles in the neck are getting short in the side of the neck and when they're getting long? Feel your shoulder blades spread. And last one, side to side. Go ahead and release that. Roll the shoulders around before we do the other side. Feel that. And then we'll switch. Just take the right arm underneath. So it can be hands to your shoulders. You can do it right here, just lifting your elbows. If the backs of the hands come together, that's option two. If the fingers come into the palm, then go there. Lift your elbows up just a little bit towards the collarbones, but soften the tops of the shoulders. So sometimes when we lift the elbows, we end up here shortening the neck. So lengthen the sides of the neck. And then now the arms will go to whatever side, heads opposite. So if you're dropping the arms to the left, right ear to right shoulder. There you go. Nice. The other thing I like to do sometimes with this one is do it with both your eyes opened and closed. So we tend to lead with our eyes. But if you think of, instead of leading from your eyes, lead from your skull. Think of dropping your skull towards one shoulder and then the other. Does that feel different? Then say leading from your chin, or like I said, your eyes. Those arms go. Last one. Side to side. And release that. And just give it a roll. So these are just three simple movements. We've already been through two. The next one will take us into a reclining position. So I'm going to move over and let Liz come into reclining position. I happen to know she likes to take her legs out long, but what I am going to ask her to do is bend her knees and put this underneath your, either your thighs or your knees. Does that feel about right? So really important to relax the low back when we're working with the upper, you know, this is the neck. So we're, we talk a lot about low back pain, but what about neck pain? Well, we're in, if we're addressing neck pain or discomfort, we want to make sure the rest of the spine is comfortable first because there's no sense in trying to work with uh, one area when the other area is barking at you, right? So quiet that down. <clears throat> she looks pretty good here with her head. If I see somebody who's, I'm going to have you tilt your head, chin up towards the sky a little bit. Somebody's more like this where the, the throat is long or the shoulders were lifted off the ground. Then I would go ahead and support her head with a blanket. And that means just bringing in, I'm going to just do this for you. Go ahead. So she, is that better or worse? It's nice. It's nice? Okay. So just a little bit of a, a cushion underneath there. And then you're going to take your arms out to your sides to 90 degrees. Nice. Bend the elbows and point the fingertips up towards the sky. So we're making an L shape with both arms. Now completely relax the wrists and the fingers. They're out of play. They're taking a holiday. Nice beach holiday for wrists and fingers. So the first part is the assessment. You're going to keep the elbows at about the height of the shoulders. Keep that L shape and just let the hands fall forward. So what this, um, this is doing is taking your arms into internal rotation. And you can feel that. Maybe a little bit of pulling your tightness right in the inner arm there. But I want you to notice, wherever you are at home, how close or far your fingertips are from the ground. So if in this exercise you find that they get a little closer, then you know that it's definitely working for you. Some of that sensory motor amnesia is there. So go ahead and lift up your arms. And then we'll check our external rotation. So now keeping those wrists and fingers floppy, you're going to drop your hands back. Or think of dropping your arms back without pushing them. Just see how far they want to go. Nice. And again, you're noticing how close they come to the floor, just for yourself. And then we'll do the movement. So come back up to that middle position. And <clears throat> you're going to alternate arms. So one will go down towards your hip as the other one goes overhead. So one's an internal rotation, the other's an external rotation. They come back and meet in the center. And then the opposite. If you like to move to your breath, you're going to come to the center and exhale and then let them fall. And that's it. Nice. So the idea is think of, I like to think that maybe I have 
rocks or something in my hands. So the weight of the arms are just falling. Nothing forced. Then we're going to add the head into this. So once you've found the movement of the arms, nice little swimming strokes here, <clears throat> you're going to see whichever way your head wants to turn, towards the top arm or the bottom arm, it doesn't matter. Follow your natural inclination. Yeah, so Liz is going to go towards her top arm and turn the head back to the center when the arms meet at the center. So she's going top. There we go. Same thing, you can do this with eyes opened or closed. And if you're doing it with your eyes closed, think of rolling your head from your skull. You might even feel yourself, you're at the base of your skull in the center, and then you can feel yourself roll towards one ear or the other. So really let your skull be along for the ride as the head rolls. And whichever way it's easier to turn, do about two more, letting your head go that way. Yeah, keeping the arms relaxed, nice job. So we're not trying to force anything. There will be no test later to see how close your hands came to the floor. Just a personal assessment. All right, now I'm gonna ask her to stop for a moment. We're gonna do the same thing. Actually, let's do it from a movement. So go ahead and continue to move for a few more. And then she chose to look towards the top hand. That was her, her more intuitive way or instinctual way to go. So I'm gonna ask her to just switch and take her gaze towards her bottom hand. And if you're at home and there is that, hmm, that hesitant moment of, Okay, that's just that, think of that, that's that neurological juju kicking in. Your brain is listening because you're doing things differently. And that's how we learn and we reprogram our muscles. So no longer moving from what we say muscle memory, but voluntarily letting the hands go back and forth and the head. You can do it with the eyes opened and move from your gaze you can also do it with your eyes closed and let the skull roll. And remember those bony landmarks in the shoulders, your collarbones and your shoulder blades. Keep your face soft, your eyes relaxed. Sometimes if you feel tightness around your mouth because your mouth is your all telling part of your face, you can just gently touch the tongue to the roof of the mouth. Keep the lips soft and just teeth slightly parted. I'll just do one or two more here. And then back to the center where we'll reassess. So align the arms and then let them fall forward again into what we call the internal rotation. So you can go ahead and let them fall all the way towards the ground. So we definitely can see a difference in that arm. You're quite a bit closer to the floor and you are in this side. A little more tightness in the side, but I don't know how, where you are at home, but this is that assessment for yourself. And then we'll go the other way, come up and take the arms back into the external rotation, just letting them fall. Can you feel any difference? Yeah, yeah. a little bit there. A little bit. Yeah, let them relax and come back up. Nice. And then we'll finish by just taking a full body stretch. You can reach through your arms and through your legs. Full body yawn, big breath in. And on any breath out, take a couple breaths in, a couple breaths out, any breath out, let yourself just land. And we'll land on the ground, everything that's touching the ground, particularly because we're working with the shoulders and the neck. Land in the shoulder blades, maybe even your arm bones. Sense the weight of your skull and where your skull's resting on the ground. And locate yourself as well so you can feel your whole body is supported on the backside, the pelvis, the legs. But locate yourself in your shoulders, your head, and your neck. And maybe say something nice to yourself, to your shoulders and your neck. The neck being that super highway between our lovely brain and our beautiful heart. Thanks for joining us today. And thank you, Liz, for being here. And hopefully this is a good way for you to um, keep yourself in line in the neck and shoulders, but more so to understand how we, you are able to do a little self-assessment as well. And then from that assessment, make 
make some movements that are playful and useful and offering yourself loving kindness as you do so. Peace, joy, love, and light.